Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands and today I wanted to talk to you about some mistakes tourists might make when they're visiting the Netherlands, especially if it's their first time. Now first of all to all the tourists watching this, I wanted to say welcome, the Netherlands is a great place, I've lived here for three and a half years and I absolutely love it. Now some of you might have seen an older video on my channel where I also talk about some mistakes that you should not make when you're in the Netherlands and that video was a few years ago, so I thought let's do another video, a sequel, letting you know about the new things that I've noticed, the new mistakes that people are making when they're here. So let's get into it. The first mistake I wanted to talk about was when tourists, I've seen this happen so many times, rent a bike without actually knowing how to properly ride a bike or have any idea of Dutch traffic rules. So I have seen this happen so, so often and all the Dutch people I know always complain about it when they're in a touristy area, especially in Amsterdam and they're trying to get from point A to point B and then they see tourists on their bikes and the tourist bikes are kind of recognizable most of the time. So, you know, you see when people aren't Dutch or living in the Netherlands and they're not familiar with Dutch traffic rules and yet they're on these bikes and some people can't even bike properly. I'm not judging. I myself did not know how to bike properly until I moved to the Netherlands. So it is definitely something you can learn. But if you know this about yourself, ask yourself if biking is really the best way you want to try and spend your time here in the Netherlands. Because biking without knowing how to properly bike is kind of like ordering a burger without knowing how to eat it correctly. Apparently the right way to do it is turning the burger upside down. Is it empirically proven? I do not know, but that's what they say. So if you're in the Netherlands and you're thinking about renting a bike, ask yourself, do you know how to ride one properly? Are you familiar with Dutch traffic rules? Do not try to look at Dutch people and do what they do because they're going to be riding a bike, holding an umbrella in one hand and you know, what's sapping their friends in the other, no hands on the steering wheels. They're just going to keep going. So you don't want to emulate that because they are very practiced in this. And if you don't live in the Netherlands, chances are you are not. Number two is the quiet cars on trains here in the Netherlands. I was really surprised when on my Instagram recently, a bunch of people who are not Dutch told me they didn't know that the Dutch trains or trains in Netherlands have silent cars. So I was really surprised. And they said, thank you, Ava, for saying something about it. I mentioned something about it on my Instagram and they were really grateful to have this information. So I said, let me talk about that on YouTube as well so that people know that Dutch trains do have these revered quiet cars. And if you are in a quiet car, you can recognize it by these symbols that are on the window. Sometimes it'll say silent, sometimes it'll have an icon. People will usually be quiet in there. So you have to ask yourself, hey, why are these Dutch people who are the Americans of Europe in terms of how loud they are and outgoing, why is everyone so quiet? And that's probably because they're in the silent car in the train. If you start talking in the silent car in the train in the Netherlands, bad things will happen. Do not do that. I'm worried for your life if you start doing that because inevitably there'll be a Dutch person who's very, very upset and they will come up to you and point to those symbols on the window and be like, my friend, this is a silent car. What do you think you're doing? Dutch people aren't afraid to come and say something, you know, it's something I quite admire about them. Me as an American, if someone is inconveniencing me, I just go, well, that's life. You can't get everything. And then Dutch people, you know, they've shown me that if you don't like something, you better let them know. So they will let you know if you are in the silent car and you are talking. Now, number three might seem like a very practical tip, but it's actually also a cultural insight. So number three has to do with how lots of tourists that I've seen or my friends visiting, they often don't reserve key attractions. So they expect to go to the Anne Frank Museum, the Anne Frank Museum, or the Rijksmuseum, for instance, a very popular museum, by just showing up on the date and they expect to be able to go. And that's just not going to happen because Dutch people, they like to reserve things three months in advance. Okay, the two museums I mentioned are very popular amongst tourists, but let's say you want to go to a restaurant, Dutch people will reserve that restaurant three months in advance because their social calendars are fully planned and booked. So if you want to go to a popular restaurant in a place like Amsterdam, well, all the Dutch people and locals who live there will have put that in their agendas dutifully months ago. So if you wanna do that, you should reserve that in advance. Now, as for the attractions like museums, well, yes, the locals are not reserving it, but like I said, they get fully booked. And you know, I'm from New York and New York is famous for, well, pizzas, bagels, uh, the Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building. Wow, New York is really famous for a lot of things. 
including people who love to wait in line. This is so popular in New York that you could be a professional line waiter. So people actually pay people to wait in line for them. That is how much people love standing in line or standing in line is a part of the culture in New York. But in the Netherlands, standing in line is not going to get you anywhere. In New York, if you're waiting in line for a cronut, then you will get the cronut at the end of the line. In the Netherlands, if you're waiting for the Van Gogh Museum, the Van Gogh Museum, you're waiting in line. Uh, first of all, it's gonna be going at a snail's place. And two, there is no cronut at the end of that line. So you're gonna be standing in line that's moving really slow. You're gonna regret all of your life choices and there is no cronut at the end. So do yourself a favor and book in advance. Number four on this list has to do when you go to cafes, which inevitably you want to do because the Netherlands has a lot of cute, gorgeous cafes for you. I recommend them. And when you go to cafes, I have another recommendation. If you are an American like me, you're probably used to going to a cafe and then having someone seat you somewhere. Because if a cafe typically serves food, then there will be a host or hostess and they will take you somewhere and show you to your table. And it will also often just be the table that you didn't want to sit at. But you know, again, that is life. And in America, we just accept it. Here in the Netherlands though, you sometimes have a bit of free will. So when you go to a cafe, do not expect there to be someone to show you to your seat. In fact, do not expect anyone at a Dutch cafe to acknowledge your presence at all unless absolutely necessary. So when you walk in, do not be standing there awkwardly. I have done that very many times and then there are people enjoying their food. It's a small cafe because it's cute and cozy and you're loving it. But then the people there are wondering why this weirdo is standing and staring at them and the, the personnel working there. What you wanna do is just confidently walk in and take a seat. Okay, now the next tip is extremely important, so listen up. And that is the customer in the Netherlands is not always right. You go to a store, go to a restaurant, cafe, all the good stuff. And just because you're a customer, well, if you're an American like me or from a culture that's similar to American culture in this case, then you might always hear the customer's always right, the customer is king and so on. But here in the Netherlands, the customer is not the king. They have a king here in the Netherlands and that is not the customer. The customer is also not always right. Dutch people are direct and they tell it like it is. So if you're in the Netherlands and you're a customer who's done something wrong, expect that the Dutch staff will tell you so. Cause really Dutch people here just value honesty and efficiency. They're not going to pamper you even if you are a paying customer because for them, you're just another person here and they're gonna treat you with equality. Which means that you as a customer, don't forget to be polite, that is just common decency. Okay, now let's say you go to a supermarket, right? And you get yourself a nice drink. That drink might come in a bottle or a can. Well, just so you know, in the Netherlands, you can return these bottles and cans. The cans are a new introduction, so this is the hottest, latest information that you can return them at the supermarket and you can get change back because when you purchase these bottles, you actually pay to have these bottles. And then when you return them, you get that amount back. And the amount varies from 10 to 15 cents, depending on whether you have a bottle or a can and 10 to 15 cents is kind of a lot. And if you get a couple of bottles, that could easily be your Euro and you can get basically nothing for a euro these days, but it is just enough to get one of those delicious pastries at the supermarket. So, you know, it's not nothing. So here's a tip for you. When I first moved here, I had no idea that there were different types of bottles and I would just throw everything into the recycling and my wife, then girlfriend, who is Dutch, was very much like, we do not waste money like that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Well, throwing away these bottles is like throwing away cash. And if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be hard to see that because you have to look at the fine print on the bottle where it says Statiegeld. That is the word that you need. I'm gonna write it down so that you see it. And when you see this word, you know that you are going to make some cash if you return. And final couple of tips here about how to interact with Dutch people, at least from my experiences, I wanted to share this with you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did when I first started visiting the Netherlands and then when I moved here. And the first one is, this is kind of complicated and tricky. So listen carefully. So in the Netherlands, a lot of people speak English and many people are extremely proficient in English. So when you're visiting a city like Amsterdam where there are a lot of tourists, people are very comfortable speaking English. And I would go into a store often and say, do you speak English? And the people working behind the cash register or the people working at the cafe who, was, who were making my coffee, thank you for making my coffee, they would say, yes, I guess I speak a little English. And it would be a bit awkward because I think for them it's, 
you questioning their ability to speak English. For once, I actually learned that you can assume people speak English when you're in a really touristy place. That said, you can't assume every single person speaks English because many people are more comfortable speaking Dutch and especially when you move out of the big cities, out of the touristy areas, you will encounter people who don't speak English as well, but that still means that they can maybe have a basic conversation with you in English, but don't assume that. So in touristy areas, you can assume, Outside of the touristy areas, don't assume as much. And especially the younger people are more proficient in English because they've had more exposure to English than older, the older generation. So if you have that in mind, you can navigate the when to assume people speak English and when not and get it right most of the time. And the final tip I have for you today is something that I always made mistakes with as an American. And that is that when I would be in a restaurant, cafe, talking to people, you know, up, clearly you can see that I love restaurants and cafes. This is where all my money goes. That's why I have a lot of tips for you. And hence this video. So when I would go to restaurants and cafes and people would ask me, do you want more coffee? I would say, I'm good. If I would go to a store and they would ask me, would you like a bag? I would say, I'm good. In America, that means no. Now in the Netherlands, people didn't understand what I was saying. If you say, no, thank you, that's pretty clear and direct because Dutch people are extremely direct. You will see that when you come to the Netherlands, they are so direct, not afraid to say what they're thinking. So when you say I'm good, they also take that pretty literally and they think you're just making a comment about how you're doing or even if they know that that means no in America or in other cultures, it's not something that they'll immediately register. And this is really funny because I've had Dutch people tell me, of course, Ava, I know what that means. But those same people then proceed to interpret that as yes, because when you say something that positive as I'm good, and you often say that with a smile on your face because you wanna let them down gently, this is how we Americans do. In the Netherlands, they're going to interpret that as a positive. So when someone asks you, would you like more coffee? And you smile and say, I'm good. They're going to give you more coffee. Now you've been warned. So if you are here in the Netherlands, just try to say no, thank you, or no, I'm okay. No, thank you. Catch yourself and then just correct yourself to make sure that people understand you clearly. So with that said, I hope you enjoy your trip to the Netherlands. If you are Dutch or local and watching this, maybe there are a few things I've left out. Let us help out our fellow people on the internet feel free to drop a comment below. And for those of you who haven't seen my other video on this, feel free to check it out and let me know if I've missed anything in these videos combined. As usual, until next time.